Deparameterization, yeah, it's actually a word, okay? But it's not gonna be in the dictionary. It's one of those tech words that eventually will find itself in the, into the vernacular. Uh, it's gonna be one of those words that if it's in a Word document or it's in PowerPoint, you're gonna have to you know, add it to your dictionary. But it's a very important word, and when we describe it, it'll make sense to you, okay? This is really the constant change and the constant effect of losing the boundary of your organization. If you think about the fact that we have virtual servers and virtual switches and routers in our data centers at the customer edge that are connecting to cloud providers or MSSPs, there, that boundary is going away. And we'll talk about some you know, key examples of this deparameterization. It, it involves a wide variety of, of participants, let's say, telecommuters and cloud computing and mobile devices, outsourcing and third-party providers. Deparameterization basically involves protecting an organization's data and systems with layered security or defense in depth by implementing a combination of cryptographic schemes, more secure protocols, hardened systems, access control mechanisms, okay? We no longer totally depend upon a DMZ zone or a public access zone network boundary with let's say a high-end router with a Metro ethernet connecting to a ISP or an ITSP. Now, do we still have that? Absolutely, but we're seeing this removal of the perimeter or our outer security boundary. For example, some vendors now offer what they call the CPENG, which is the next generation customer premises equipment, which is basically virtual machines connecting to a cloud provider, maybe with a CASP or a broker in between. Because of the introduction of wireless, Bluetooth, 4G LTE and Verizon's CAT M1, which is coming soon or by the time you watch this already arrived, okay, uh, we'll be physically copying data to phones, pads, pods, and USB firewire drives, but those boundaries are going away because we have these other ways to connect, even through satellite, okay? So the corporate boundaries and all these different devices have blurred that edge dramatically. With telecommuters, we'll be looking at emerging solutions at implementing authentication authorization policies. This will involve multi-factor authentication on your devices, or maybe authenticating based on the way that actual users slide four or five times, the behavior, okay, of their sliding of their iPad, for, exa for example. We'll combine that kind of biometric with fingerprint and facial scanning. We've also got solutions for mobile users like Palo Alto Network's Global Protect service or Cisco's Umbrella, which really does blur the boundaries as your teleworkers actually connect from their devices to the DNS servers on the cloud of Cisco, leveraging open DNS, okay? So there's a real need to add additional user authentication identity solutions for teleworkers, okay? We've got IPsec, Sweet B cryptography, we've got TLS 1.2 and higher, okay? But we're gonna be looking and going beyond some of these existing well-established protocols to some new techniques.